Minglawa and welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I am Agajo. Today we report on state councillor hosting video conference with in charge medical professionals of fighting against COVID-19. An intense market competition for wood-based furniture and the news coverage on situation of art amid COVID-19 outbreak. And the last report is on major cities in Myanmar should take precautions against possible earthquake. All of that on this edition of Myanmar Today, but for now, let's take a look at what's happening in local news. State Councilor Don San Suu Kyi, in her capacity as the chairperson of the National Central Committee for COVID-19 Prevention, Control and Treatment, held a video conference yesterday from Presidential Palace in Nebido with senior health professionals who are combating the pandemic. Dr. Adira La talked about preparations for COVID-19 treatments at the hospitals and management for containment of the disease. Dr. Momo San briefed on the changing trends of COVID-19 symptoms, situations for possible infections, containment works, public participation, status of following guidelines, manageable treatments provided to COVID-19 patients at the hospital, exchange of knowledge on treatment with Myanmar doctors in foreign countries in finding the best ways for curing the disease. In response to the discussions, the state council called for cooperation of the public by following the guidelines for fighting against the COVID-19, self-protection, and preventing transmission and possible assistance of the government. The Central Committee on Organizing Second Ludo meetings held to meeting 2 2020 in Nebido yesterday. Bidonsu Ludo and Bidu Ludo speaker Uti Komye first said the 16th regular session of the Second Ludo's will commence on 18th May 2020. He said the meeting will focus on the essential 2019 2020 bill for additional union budget allocation and prioritized tasks of the Ludo process. He said these tasks are estimated to be complete within the short term and the health protection and accommodation will be cooperated by the union government and the relevant departments and organizations to be in line with the directives and orders related to containing and treating COVID-19. International flights have been suspended since the spread of COVID-19, but 96 Myanmar nationals returned from Incheon Airport in South Korea to Myanmar on a Myanmar Airways International MAI flight at 8.45 p.m. yesterday. The Myanmar government is working to recall Myanmar nationals facing difficulties residing abroad for various reasons. The factor in the degree of the difficulties they are facing, the situation of putting them in facility quarantine, the rules and regulations of the host nation, including flight situation, and cooperate with the host nation to send a special flight. The 96 Myanmar nationals in South Korea are brought back in the first batch, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is complying with the National Central Committee on Protection, Containment, and Treatment of Coronavirus Diseases 2019 to cooperate with the relevant ministries and the Myanmar Embassy in South Korea and the Republic of Korea government to negotiate to call them back. That's all with the local news. Now we'll move on to our first report. At the video conferencing hosted by State Councilor Dong San Suu Kyi, the medical professionals who are in charge of diagnosing, preparedness, and treatment of COVID-19 diseases discussed about the testing, attendance in hospitals, and changing symptoms of the COVID-19. The video conferencing is aimed to give answers to the concerns of the citizens about the accuracy of testing and to raise public awareness more. Tora Suizin has details. State Council Lado Aung San Suu Kyi, in her capacity as chairperson of the National Central Committee for Prevention, Control and Treatment of COVID-19, hosted a video conference with in-charge medical professionals participating in the fight against COVID-19. The participants of the video conference were Professor Dauda Tititin, the Beauty Director General of National Health Laboratory, who is in charge of diagnosing the disease. Dauda Tidala, the Beauty Director General of the Department of Medical Services, who is in charge of preparedness and management, and Professor Dauda Mumusen of South Oglaba Medane and Child Hospital, who is in charge of treatment of COVID-19. 
According to Professor Dr. Tete Ding, the preparedness for the testing of COVID-19 was done in the middle of January at National Health Laboratory, which was designated as National Influenza Center by World Health Organization in 2008. On 19 February, the WHO officially certified NHL of Myanmar to test COVID-19 disease. Professor Dr. Tedidin explained the steps of testing and its high percentage of accuracy. The specimens are also randomly delivered to National Institute of Laboratory in Bangkok of Thailand, which is the reference laboratory by WHO, to check the matching of the result. She explained how the laboratory capacity is being improved in Myanmar. Department of Medical Research is assisting in the laboratory tests or sent sample from Yangon. Around the middle of May, the branch of National Health Laboratory in Mandalay, Public Health Laboratory will start running with the equipment from Yunnan Province or China. In addition, Bound Safety Laboratory, Laboratory in Taonji and Malamyang will start running soon. COBAS 6800 analyzer is being installed and the required reagent will be arrived around the middle of May. Then we will be able to test all contact person with the infected patients, the person showing the symptoms and 10% of people at the quarantine. According to Dr. Dida, large general hospitals of states and regions out of 1,168 government hospitals of the whole country are designated to give treatment to COVID-19 patients. Attendance of patients in hospitals is identified by three categories by the Ministry of Health and Sports. People presenting fever and symptoms of acute respiratory disease and that of severe acute respiratory disease with no other clear etiology are isolated in the hospital and their specimen is taken to NHL to be tested. The people with history of travel to or residence in an affected area are put into facility quarantine. 80% of the patients show mild to moderate symptoms 20% show severe symptoms and out of 20% severe patients, 5% needs to be treated in ICU. By observing the patients, we notice the changes in symptoms of COVID-19. The common symptoms are fever, cough and fatigue. However, before these respiratory symptoms are presented, some patients suffer from tiredness or diarrhea. Because of the uncommon symptoms, people rarely go to the hospital and they become asymptomatic carriers. Later, we found out that tiredness and loss of smell and taste are the prior symptoms of the disease. The reason of higher spread in the world is because of not noticing the uncommon symptoms and not practicing social distancing. I want to suggest the public that the disease can show both common and uncommon symptoms. So, to make sure to report the history of travel or close contact with infected persons. Dr. Momosan also said that at present, the number of confirmed cases is acceptable to give proper treatment with the available resources. It is important to contain the spread of the virus, not to increase dramatically. So the public are highly requested to follow the health guidelines. With the cooperation of 55 million citizens in our country, we have to overcome this disease. No matter how the Ministry of Health and Sports drives, no matter how the government supports, it is still not enough to win the battle against COVID-19. The individual citizens have to take responsibility for oneself and their surroundings. Personal safety helps ensure the community safety. That's all for now. This is Tora Suizin from MI Radio. That's the report on state council are hosting the video conference with the medical professionals fighting against COVID-19. Because of the modern furniture entering the furniture market of Myanmar, wood-based furniture is facing intense market competition. Higher price and limited choices are one of the reasons to make the wood-based furniture market steady. So the producers are producing the furniture made of cheaper timber for, for the users to be affordable as well as to enhance the market. Dora Suisin has more. 
In Myanmar, wood-based furniture has been used since the ancient times, so Myanmar people know well about the quality of timber. The wood-based furniture is comfortable for all seasons, especially in summer. It has plenty of durability as well. Being preferred by the local people, the wood-based furniture is widely produced nationwide. Most of the raw materials are sold by Myanmar Timber Enterprise for the productions. Myanmar Timber Enterprise sells 10% of hardwood production of the whole country to the MSMEs in the regions and states. In the previous year, 330,000 tons of hardwoods were produced, and 33,000 tons, accounting for 10% of the production, were distributed in respective ratio to the states and regions by tender system. Another source of wood raw materials is that the timbers from the arrested illegal logging or trading are sold by tender system as well. The timber from the arrested illegal logging or trading, which cannot be tendered because of low quality or invalid pattern, is distributed to wood-based related associations. Most of the furniture productions obtain the raw materials from these tendering. Especially in Mandalay and north of Chen State, the wood-based furniture and handicrafts production are widespread. Although there is available access to the raw materials, the price of production is quite higher. When modern furniture is entering the market with much cheaper price, the market competition of wood-based furniture becomes intense. There is intense market competition for wood-based furniture because more imported furniture is coming into the market. The market of wood-based furniture is steady because of the price and limited choice. Especially, the restaurants and offices are using modern furniture more. When the market condition becomes slow, the producer find another ways to make it improve. Although teak is the most popular material, it is so expensive. So in the wood-based furniture market, the furniture made of other hardwood is coming to get a place. For the market development of wood-based furniture, the raw materials have to be affordable. If the timber is expensive, such as teak, we can produce the furniture by placing with another cheaper timber. Moreover, the furniture can be produced by cutting raw materials from plantations of the timber, which grow quickly. If the furniture is produced in creative design, the market will improve for long term. Despite intense market competition, the customers are buying the wood-based furniture as much as they are affordable. For example, the household prefers to use the modern furniture and wood-based furniture together instead of using the whole set of wood-based furniture. Moreover, the producers are manufacturing the furniture which are made of mixed timber and modern raw materials such as steels. <laughs> We can also produce furniture by mixing the timber in other modern raw materials. It is also widely applied in other nations. Solid wood and many types of steels are combined to produce the furniture. Most of the households use it. It is good looking as well as affordable. Instead of using teak furniture, which is quite expensive, the local people became to be aware of using other type of hardwood-based furniture. The producers are also creatively producing different types of wood-based furniture to seek for the improvement of wood-based furniture market. This is Dora Suizin from MI Radio. That's the news coverage on intense market competition for wood-based furniture. Stay with us as we bring you more reports on Myanmar today. After the outbreak of COVID-19, the art market in Myanmar was shortlisted this year. The artists were 
only able to organize only a handful of art exhibition in the year 2020. However, the art collection market has been growing in Myanmar recently with the numbers of domestic buyers are increasing, although the artists used to depend on the purchasing of, of the foreigners. Williamson will tell us the full story. Art is a part of our culture as art plays a crucial role in any society. Art is also the expression of creative ideas and imagination. At the same time, it is also the reflection of one's experience. Art brings the people together, bringing different reactions and emotions, making the people think, feel, and act. Myanmar is also a very rich cultural and artistic country where the people have been associated with art for centuries. Myanmar Art has a very much active own community where regular art exhibitions are being held as demand for art collections grows year by year. There are more than 50 art galleries alone in Yangon. Without including Mandalay, which is known as the capital of culture in Myanmar, there are several renowned and well-known artists in Myanmar along with emerging new artists. Speaking on why the people love to collect the works of artists, Ulun Jui. An artist who is specialized in watercolor art said, Kabalonga ma Luria, two down there come, a better than I say, she or Yelena, two down there. There are people who collect other precious things if they have money, but there are also people who collect the works of artists as precious things. And when this collection of arts is traded back, it profits a lot. We can call it irreplaceable beauty. We are not sure how long we will live in this world. Let us spend our time enjoying the works of the artists like us. Nipo Wu is also one of the artists who has been holding the exhibition on his walk for years and around two to three exhibition in the year 2020 was held. But the outbreak of COVID-19 make his exhibition short and speaking to my radio on the current situation of art market, after the outbreak of COVID-19, he said, okay. I was planning to have a solo show on 27 March, but due to COVID-19, it had to be cancelled for the safety of the visitors and others as well. And this incident, we had also cancelled two to three shows. But if we see the market, we used to mostly depend on foreign collectors, as foreigners can pay a lot more than the domestic buyers. However, this trend is also changing gradually. We see the number of domestic art collectors increasing, and people have started to understand the importance of collecting paintings. Even though the amount of sale may not be the high financially, the number of buyers are definitely increasing, which is the good news to the artists like us. This is one of the major changes which the market has been recently. According to Nipo Wu, nowadays the number of youth getting interested in painting is increasing. The number of painting class providers are extending their services. It seems the parents are also encouraging their children to learn what they want to learn according to Nipo Wu. Speaking to Emma Radio on it, he said, We are pleased to see the increasing numbers of youngsters are starting to learn this art. In the past, the parents gave importance only to the education of their children. We have also seen the increasing number of university students getting involved in art subjects and taking subjects related to arts. Doz Ali Aung is a managing director of Artist Smart Art Gallery and she has been organizing several art exhibitions in recent years and speaking to Amal Radio on the training change in art exhibition has seen recently, she said There is not many of changes in this art community but what I have learned so far is by holding the exhibition like this we improve the mutual relation among each other, the relation between the artists and the buyers or their fans. We need to organize more of art exhibitions as out of one of the main characteristics in measuring the image of a nation. We are all working to show the artwork and sculpture of Myanmar to the world 
and we only hope to be able to penetrate into international markets, as artworks and sculptures share the big role in telling how rich culture and tradition we have. This is one and for on my radio. That's the report on the situation of art market amid COVID-19 outbreak. The key cause of an earthquake is due to a subduction zone that exists in the length of more than 1,400 kilometers ranging from India Myanmar border to Sumatra Island in Indonesia. Apart from this subduction zone, the guy fault with the length of more than 1,200 kilometers from Budao, northern of the state of the Modama Sea, usually rocks significant earthquake earthquakes. In addition to the guy fault, there are a host of other faults. In general, strong earthquakes jolt along the Gain Fault. A magnitude 7.3 earthquake rocked near the Beijing in 1946. Another earthquake measuring 6.8 on richer scale jolted in the same place 66 years later. Mintong Ojin and Yenan Laogai report. The key cause of an earthquake is due to an subduction zone that exists in the length of more than 1,400 kilometers, ranging from India Myanmar border to Sumatra Island in Indonesia. Apart from this subduction zone, Sakai Fault with a length of more than 1,200 kilometers from Budo, northern of the state to Modama City, usually rocks significant earthquakes. In addition to the sky fault, there are a host of other faults. In general, strong earthquakes jolt along the sky fault. A magnitude 7.3 earthquake rocks near the Beijing in 1946. Another earthquake, measuring 6.8 on Richter scale, jolt in the same place 66 years later. <laughs> A magnitude 7.3 earthquake rocked in the Beijing in 1946. 70 years later, another magnitude 6.8 earthquake jolted in the same place. As far as we review, the earthquake measuring around 6.8 on Richter scale usually reoccur 70 to 75 years later. But in 2012, the earthquake did not reoccur. Therefore, if the reoccurrence prolongs, the intensity of the earthquake may be stronger from 6.8 to 7 or 7 above. Especially, Sakai, Nibiron and Bagu are located on Sakai Fault, and so the cities are in the danger of possible earthquake. The earthquake records show that the 1930 earthquake caused damages to pagodas and stupas, including pagoshi model and houses in Bago. Also in Django, the diamond part of Shredagon pagoda collapsed and 50 people were killed due to the effect of the Bago earthquake. Yangon is located at the distance of 30 kilometers from Sakai Fault. The earthquakes occurred in this part of Sakai Fault. In around 1930, there were three earthquakes in 1929 and 1930. Swa, Pew, and Pago earthquakes measuring about 7.3 on Richter scale came from the southern part of Sakai Fault. It happened in 1930, now is 2020. The difference is 90 years, possibly will be most likely. The earthquake child in 1839 caused considerable damages in Sakai, Mandalay and Nibiru. The reoccurrence of the earthquakes that have not happened is more than 180 years now. For that reason, these cities are in the danger of possible earthquake, said Tao Damio then. There is Zakai in the fault of Mandalay and Zakai. In the southern part, there are Metila and Wondwing. It was the last earthquake in 1839. A total of 400 people were killed at the time. The later research focused it may be magnitude 8. The earthquake never reoccurs from 1839 until now and this part is the most dangerous. The earthquake that does not happen there is about 180 or 190 years long. Uso Treso, 
Vice President of Myanmar Earthquake Committee, said the earthquake may happen in any time. The public need to know the durability of their buildings and houses. Proper repairs should be carried out. The public should take precaution. An earthquake can happen in any time. A small earthquake rock, a little knowledge should have how the building changes. Whether the house or the building in claims or cracks should be repaired. If the house or the building is considered vulnerable, proper repair should be carried out. For a part the government, it should repair its building. By doing so, the losses and damages may be prevented and enforceable losses will be also the same matter. The aftershocks rock for several times after the earthquake rock in 2016, causing the collapse of the steel bars and temples in Pakand, in Myanmar. And the government is stepping up its effort to raise awareness of earthquake risk across the country. And that's all we have for today's reports and it's time to check on some international news here on Myanmar Today. Three stories dominated trading in New York on Wednesday's session led by the Federal Reserve wrapped up in two days interest rate meeting saying that it will do all it can by using every tool at disposal to prop up the now ailing U.S. economy because of the COVID-19. The Fed were promising to keep interest rates zero and to continue buying assets as long as it takes. Earlier in the day, traders in New York had heard the U.S. economy was down by 4.8%, a staggering figure in the first quarter. But they looked past that in the Wednesday session in favor of news coming out of the Juliet Sciences in California, a biotech company working on the vaccine for COVID-19 that seems promising. Of all the foreigners who stayed in China for the COVID-19 outbreak, Perhaps the most famous is actor Nigel Dixon, the former double to Rowan Atkinson's Mr. Bean. Dixon in more recent years has earned quite the following on Chinese social media as Mr. P. He arrived in Wuhan just before the outbreak. Little did he know he'd be in for a life-changing experience over the next four months. I was scared, I was frightened um, because it was something totally alien and new and a concept that I'd never, and I don't think many people had ever experienced before, you know, the virus can't read uh, a passport. Dixon kept himself busy amid the lockdown in his rented apartment by recording and posting cheer up videos online for Wuhan people, many of which have gone viral. And the local residents were also giving back to him. We were able to go out at one point um, but when it got to a stage where it was said it was too dangerous to go out, uh, I'd go down to the security gate uh, and there'd be some nice Chinese people there who would assist me to place an order to go across the road to the shop for me and then bring the food back. People have been very helpful. Dixon went through the lockdown himself. He believes it was an essential measure. Absolutely, totally the right thing to do. Uh, to lock down was to contain, to lock down was being responsible. It's being responsible not just, well, it, it was to look after the people of Wuhan. You could contain a situation uh, and have it under, in some control rather than out of control. But at the same time, by putting a ring around it of protection, you stopped it from going out. I think the virus uh, and the containment and the lockdown was the best thing that could have happened. As demand for crude oil has plummeted and inland storage costs have climbed up, the U.S. Coast Guard has released dramatic footage of the dozens of oil tankers anchored off the coast of Southern California to store crude oil in the sea during the pandemic. This is what the Southern California coast looks like these days. Dozens of oil tankers are lined up to provide crude oil for the region, but a lot of it is going unused. Biggest cuts in demand have come from uh, transportation fuels, demand for jet fuel, demand for gasoline, uh, demand for uh, diesel 
um, you know, for, for the trucking and other transportation industries. As the second largest county in the United States, Los Angeles has millions of cars registered. On a regular day, they would collectively travel hundreds of millions of miles. In the midst of the pandemic shutdown, the number of cars on the roads and planes in the air have significantly diminished the need for gas and jet fuel. Oil companies operating off the coast of the, of the U.S. have paid several oil transportation companies to store the oil in the sea in tankers instead of storing it in inland storage bases because the value of space in inland storage bases is much more expensive today than oil itself. And the buildup of these tankers is causing a backup on the supply chain for crude oil. The crude that was sent to California is now waiting to land. Behind that, there's other crude that will uh, suppose, you know, would have been shipped uh, to follow those vessels. Behind that's crude that would have come out of the ground to be sent to the coast somewhere to be shipped to wherever. And all of that is, is backing up and um, the, the effects have been, have been pretty spectacular. Italy will allow some businesses to start reopening as soon as this week as it continues to record a decline in new COVID-19 infections. Italy's manufacturing industry will start reopening on May 4th, but businesses frequented by the general public such as bars, restaurants and learning institutions will remain closed until September. The Italy's government is weighing the pros and cons. Switching on and setting up. For guests, these restaurants can only hope will return. I am taking part in this event to convey a message of hope and support to my colleagues who are suffering in this situation. From taverns to Michelin-starred fine dining, restaurants across Italy took part in a flash mob, demanding they be able to reopen sooner with support. A business like mine in the city in the middle of the piazza, having to pay city rents but with no customers, unfortunately could bring us to collapse very, very soon. Italy will move to stage two of its COVID-19 exit plan next week, but restaurants won't be able to open until June and only for takeaway. Owners say if factories can open, they should also be given the green light. And that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining me on Myanmar today. I am Agajo. Have a great day, everyone. Stay home, stay safe, practice good personal hygiene, and follow instructions strictly, and always be on a high alert for important news. Goodbye.